You are watching Segamata Television. Now it's time for a legal discussion with Mr. Fitzgerald Lewis and Ali Azar, attorneys at law from the law office of Lewis and Associates in Falls Church, Virginia. Let's hear what our attorneys have to say today. Namaste viewers, this is Fritzger Lewis and Ali Azar from the Law Offices of Lewis and Associates in Falls Church, Virginia, and you're watching us on Sagamata television program. Ali, what are we discussing today? Uh, Mr. Lewis, I wanted to talk uh, about something of a little more relevance this time, as to specifically to the viewers of this wonderful program. Um, I know we've been talking about entries without inspection and people making misrepresentations, but I wanted to add another interesting flip to this, asylums. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that a lot of people who come into the U.S. and claim asylums cannot afford to get onto a first-class flight, which brings them directly to the U.S. Uh, we had a situation where this gentleman came to us uh, from um, uh, Nepal. He went to Moscow. From Moscow, he went to Guatemala. And then from Guatemala, he crossed most of Mexico on foot. And then he entered the United States, and he claimed asylum. Now, I know generally when you're looking to seek asylum, you're just looking to run away from the area of persecution. In this particular situation where, uh, you know, you've crossed uh, multiple borders and resided in multiple countries for anywhere from a few hours to maybe a few days, weeks, months, how does that impact your asylum in the U.S.? Well, it has a substantial impact because the objective of, of someone running away from hardship where they may get uh, killed right. or persecuted based on certain uh, protected grounds of asylum. The main thing is if I'm running in and I get to Belgium, for example, right. I should be applying for asylum over there or I, I get to another country which recognizes asylum in their country because there are certain countries, I mean, for example, you don't want to be in Libya or Iraq or certain places. You can't be expected to file asylum. Right. Um, so, um, and I would guess Russia is one of those places. But that's here or there. But let's presume that you got get to Canada. From Canada, you come in. There's going to be a potentially large issue right. on your case saying, why why didn't you apply as, as, for asylum in the first chance you got? And if you right. were in Canada or Britain or Belgium or, or, or any of these places uh, which recognize uh, the asylum law of the UNHCR, and they're going to say, why don't you seek the uh, protective status of a refugee in that country? So, yeah, it's going to create a, a massive amount of problem. Any other questions? But let's say you do cross some country like Guatemala or Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's more to do not with the actual region. It has more to do with the access point into the U.S. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you can argue? Well, I think if you're coming in from Guatemala, you don't speak the language, not that you would come to the United States because you speak English or something like that. But yeah, it makes it a little easier because you can argue that it was basically my travel traveling point and my destination was the U.S. So it makes it a little easier. Mexico certainly because, again, they have other their own issues and they can't really take care of refugees. So it really comes down to a developed country where they have, uh, they have uh, sanctuaries for refugees, whereas there are other countries that really don't cater uh, to uh, refugee status. Um, in those cases, I think the case would be very different. But again, the complications can arise. The best thing is if, you can, if you're coming in to the United States seeking asylum, then use the direct route to the U.S. or Canada or wherever they're going right. as their de final destination to apply. This is Fitzgerald Lewis and Eliazar saying goodbye and God bless for now. Thank you. Now it's time for a health segment with Dr. Dan Biswakarma from Lorton, Virginia. Let's hear what advice he has to give to us today. Namaskar, my Dr. Dan Biswakarma. Ma, yaula aza yo cholesterol sambandhi choto dan kar le raha kuchu. Yaula tha yaula yo cholesterol yo ek kisim ko fat ho, chillo padartha ho. Ta tio chahi hami le hamro sarir le aakhali pani banao cha ra khana baato bani paincha. 
भाई स्वस्थ मं में यो हमें फैट बाहर बार खाए खाई राख् पर्दन शरीर ने बनाई रखा हो जो जो खाना हमें खाइ ते यो कोलेस्ट्रोल प्रशस्त मात्रा में पाइ पाइन यो कोलेस्ट्रोल चाहे हम सेल फंक्शन को लगी हम शरीर को फंक्शन को लगी आवश्यक होने अति आवश्यक होने कुछ हो तर यदि चाहिए भाग बड़ी भो इस हमें हानि हानि भरना साथ स्वास्थ्य में असर पारने हो जस्ते मुटू को रोग लियाने तेगर हाई ब्लड प्रेसर बढ़ाने स्ट्रोक बनाने तस्ते कर पेरिफेरल भास्कुलर डिजिज भाई नशा में सांगुरो भार कहीं खुट्टा दुख्ने खुट्टा मरने रुट्टे काट्न पर्ने अवस्था होगा तेज कर हमें यह पैनक्रियाज भैनक्रियाज भ्लैंड में एकदम फैट कलेक्शन भर इस पैनक्राटाइटिस बना सकता तस्ते कर हमें यह गल ब्लैडर को प्रब्लम गल ब्लैडर में स्टोन बन सकने संभावना होने यो यो हमें चाहिए चाहिए तर बड़ी भाई हानि भी कर सकता हमें यो खाना में हमें खाँदा खेल में एकदम ध्यान पुर्व पर्ने यहाँ था होगा यह कोलेस्ट्रोल चाहे विशेषकर दुई भाग में विभाजन कर गुड कोलेस्ट्रोल अर्क बैड कोलेस्ट्रोल हो पैला गुड कोलेस्ट्रोल भन एचडीएल कोलेस्ट्रोल जिस हमें हाई डेन्सिटी लाइपोप्रोटीन कोलेस्ट्रोल भाई तो राम कोलेस्ट्रोल हो इस नराम कोलेस्ट्रोल फैंक हमला शरीर में यह ब्लड भेसल में डिपोजिट होना बा रोक् भी नराम कोलेस्ट्रोल में एलडीएल कोलेस्ट्रोल अथवा लो डेन्सिटी लाइफ ऑफ प्रोटीन कोलेस्ट्रोल अथवा ट्राइग्लिस्ट्राइड अथवा यो वेरी लो डेन्सिटी लाइफ ऑफ प्रोटीन लाइफ ऑफ प्रोटीन कोलेस्ट्रोल वीएलडीएल हमें बे विशेषकर यह नराम कोलेस्ट्रोल में विभाजन कर हस्त आदला में यह कोलेस्ट्रोल संबंधी छोटो जानकारी ये नई ये टुंग्याँचु अर्क हफ्ता यह कोलेस्ट्रोल संबंधी थप जानकारी लाने बिलाईदिस्कारीजन Now we would like to conclude today's episode with this beautiful Nepali song. See you next week. Until then, I am Shreya Skadhal saying goodbye and namaste. Thank you.